Yeah, I'm uh, excited to be at the IOP. We had a great seminar on Tuesday afternoon already. I'm going to focus on the Senate, the state of play in the Senate, and can the dysfunction, I think, is uh, uh, concerned uh, Americans of all stripes be overcome. And we're going to talk about the filibuster and the role it plays, campaign financing, and whether we need reform or not. I'm also going to look at uh, the Senate as an example of a legislative body that can work effectively in the context of immigration reform. And then finally, I'm going to take some time to look at my service on the Intelligence Committee and, and everything that we uh, considered there, including the NSA's overreach, in my opinion. The NSA is collecting uh, almost every American's phone records on a daily basis. I think that's a violation of the Fourth Amendment. I also want to take a look at the uh, CIA's activities in the mid-2000s uh, when it came to the, the uh, detention and uh, interrogation program that they ran that uh, I think is really a stain on America's history. We released a report at the end of last year detailing what happened. I'm also I'm excited about uh, any and every other topic out there from the budget to the pending deal with Iran uh, to climate change and what we do for our energy technology. So the sky's the limit and what I would tell you is already the, the student energy here is fantastic. People are engaged and that's the whole point of the IOP is to give students uh, insights into the way our government works, whether you're right, left, or center. And in the end, I always felt my responsibility and my role as a senator was to inspire and encourage Americans, particularly young Americans, to spend a little bit of time being a citizen, because I think that's the most important job we all have. I've always been an optimist, maybe a, a terminal optimist, and I, I will point out that I think it's just one of these moments in our history when we're, we're faced with some really tough questions. They don't have easy answers, and that sometimes leads to what you see in Washington today. But I know we're going to find our way clear, and I'm looking in part to the younger generation to help us find our way forward, because in so many ways the young gen younger generation isn't captive to some of the old ways of thinking. Uh, you hear a lot from the younger generation, why all the focus on social issues? Uh, they're, they're, they're non starters to us. Who, who, who cares? You live with who, who you love. A woman ought to have a right to make her own decisions about her reproductive health uh, and, and so on. And then you also have in that same cohort, uh, I think, a focus on let's be fiscally re responsible. Uh, let's make sure we don't overspend and, and put all of that on our shoulders. Climate change, I think, is well understood and, and accepted among younger voters of all, all stripes. And the focus ought to be on not denying that it's happening, but hey, how do we lead the world in the in the new technology? So, in in the end, the the revival historically in, in American politics has been with young Americans, and I have every confidence that young Americans today are going to pick up that banner. Historically, the Senate has been the place where pragmatic, moderate policies have been generated, where both parties have worked together, and and I believe we can return. Uh, to those times in a 21st century context. Don't ask me exactly how. That's probably why I'm happy to be here, because I want to hear some of the ideas from, the, from students. Uh, I want to share some of my ideas. And, and in the end, senators are uh, figures who will respond to public opinion and public pressure. And, and, and I believe there, there will be those moments. But it's going to take the younger generation saying, okay, enough already. This is too important. You know, there's that old saying that academic politics are so vicious because so little is at stake. And I think our politics at the national level become so vicious because so much is at stake. And it's time to realize that in the end we, as the President of the United States famously said, we're all on the red, white, and blue team.